Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Picade, which is a tabletop arcade system powered by the Raspberry Pi. Let's get started. When I first saw pictures of the Picade, I thought it was something really cool. Now, one of the problems with big full-size arcade cabinets is that they take up a lot of space. If you're like me, you may not have space to place an arcade cabinet. I've got a full game room here, but I do not have an area where I could place an arcade cabinet and have it not get in the way. Where this Picade seems like it may solve that problem. The fact that it's powered by a Raspberry Pi is an added bonus. I saw this was available at buyapi.ca as well as pieshop.us. There are two versions of the Picade, one with a screen and one with a bring your own screen. The Picade kit comes with everything you see here except a Raspberry Pi, the power supply for a Raspberry Pi, and also the memory card for the Pi. In Canada, it's currently listed at $249.95 for the one with the screen and $199.95 if you plan on using your own screen. If you're in the States, it's $199.95 for the entire kit with the screen and $154.95 if you plan on using your own screen. So I reached out to the good folks at Buy a Pi, said I'm extremely interested in the Picade. I would really like to build one and show the build on my YouTube channel and they are nice enough to give me a bit of a discount to purchase so I can show all of you. So here's basically everything you need for the build. You will need a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. You will need a power supply, a memory card in the form of a micro SD, as well, completely optional, heat sinks. Opening the box for the Pi Cade, you can see a lot of packing beans in here. Uh, there's also a nice paper. It says a mini arcade cabinet is for life. Now there were no instructions included in the box, but there was a nice paper here with a link to where you could get the instructions. There are two different types. You can get written instructions as well as a very lengthy video that builds it from front to back. In this video here, I'll do an accelerated build to show you in a shorter amount of time how to build the Picade. Another neat thing that was included uh, were these stickers. I wasn't really expecting these. They're stickers that you can stick on the side of the cabinet as well as stickers to go over top of the buttons if you would like the buttons labeled. Another nice touch are these boxes that hold the speakers and also the ones that hold the buttons and the screws. They're like Rubbermaid containers, you can use them again for something else if you have other little projects on the go. So it was kind of neat. If you are building a Picade, I do recommend building it on a hard surface that's stable, as well as to put something down that's soft on that hard surface. Because there are little screws, there's nuts and bolts, and you can easily scratch the surface that you're working on and also easily scratch the Picade itself. For me, what I did is I used the bubble wrap that was kind of protecting everything to use as a base where I rested everything and did my work on. It's really nice because everything is clearly labeled. There are slots for where things are supposed to be screwed to. There's text labeling on everything. So it really takes out a lot of the guesswork. Now, one thing that wasn't really clear in the instructional video, and I'm not sure if I did correct myself, uh, was use the correct size of screws. So there are different thicknesses for the screws, but there are also different lengths, which wasn't really talked about. So my rule of thumb was use the smallest ones first, and then at the very end, use the longer ones. And it seemed to work out for me. If you do run into an issue where you have a screw that's too long, just swap it out because everything seems to be pretty interchangeable. Now the first step is to attach the brackets to the base of the Picade. Um, you will notice that there is only one hole drilled here for each bracket, yet there are two holes on the bracket. All you really need to do is to use the one hole. Just make sure the bolt and nut are tied really tight. So what I recommend is using a pair of needle nose pliers on one end, using the screwdriver on the other end, which will ensure a snug fit. The next step is to attach the hinges and the bracket onto the board labeled right. The next step is to attach the speakers to both the left and the right panels. Also on the left, there is a spot for a bracket as well. Also on the left panel, there is a piece where the door closes into that you need to install right there. The next step is to install the brackets on the top piece. 
Once that's done, you can place the face plate as well as the two sides onto the base and bolt everything up. The next step is to put the final latch on the door itself and then attach the door to the back. When that's done, you can attach the top handle piece, but I would recommend only screwing in one side. If you screw in both sides, you will have to later unscrew it as I found out the hard way. Once that's done, you have to peel off the plastic on the plexiglass in order to place the artwork that will go under your buttons. So you peel it off, place this little vinyl decal on the plexiglass itself, and then place that on the board which will hold the buttons. The next step is to mount the joystick. And in order to do that, make sure you unscrew the ball from the top and remove the dust cover. The next step is to place the buttons. Now you can really place these in any order you want and in any color you want. Uh, it's all up to you. But I will note that these buttons were actually very difficult to get in. They require a lot of force and you have to put them in on a slight bit of an angle in order for them to go in. Once the joystick and the buttons are installed, it's time to wire it up. Now, what you have to do is there are two different sets of wires. One is specifically for the joystick and you will have to split the wires a little bit so that they do reach the proper terminals. There's a really handy wiring guide, which I will leave a link in the description that I used in order to match up properly with the board to make my life a lot easier. It doesn't really matter what color of wire ends up on which button, but you will have to remember what color of wire is on which button when you go to map these buttons to the actual little board itself. Once everything is wired up, it should look something like this. As you can see, there is a black wire that goes to each terminal, um, which is the ground wire. And on the buttons, there is one black wire that touches each button as well. Now I will again post a link in the description for the wiring guide to make your life a lot easier. The next step is to put buttons in the actual Pi Cade. These buttons will be used for volume control, for start, for coin, and other functions within the game. The next step is to wire all of these buttons up inside the Pi Cade. Once all your buttons are wired, it's now a time to attach those wires to the Pi Cade board. This little board here is what talks to the Raspberry Pi, so this board itself will plug into the Raspberry Pi via USB and register all the buttons as a controller. This board is very clearly laid out, but again, I'll leave a link in the description with a guide on where to put the wires. One thing I really like about this board is that they're screw terminals, so you don't need to solder anything. All of the wires plug directly in, and then you can just tighten the screw down to secure them. Once everything is wired up, it should look something like this. So pretty much all of the terminals are used. Uh, everything is connected. So the wires are connected to the joystick, the buttons, this little board here, the buttons on the inside are also connected into this board. The next step is to mount this computer board on the base of the Pi Cade. I recommend putting the Pi Cade on its side to make your life a lot easier. So you have access to the bottom of the Pi Cade where you will have to place some bolts. If you're curious on how to mount that little board and what position it should be, uh, there's a really easy way to tell. And that is there's a headphone jack on one of the sides which should be facing out. So that way there's a cutout on the Pi Cade and you can use that cutout to plug headphones directly into this board. The next step is to install the screen. So there's a few pieces of plexiglass that you will have to take the tape off of. And there is a little, I guess, X bracket here. So you place the screen down, um, bolt up the X bracket just a little bit. And then when the screen is in proper position, that's when you tighten the back of the X bracket all the way. Once the screen is bolted on, there are these neat little rubber cube stickies that kind of hold the screen in place. So all you have to do is just place them within those little square holes on the back X bracket, and it should hold your screen in place also tightening the X bracket down, it's really not gonna move anywhere. Once the screen is installed, there is a ribbon cable that plugs into one of the computer boards. 
So make sure you plug it into the computer boards and use these little feet that stick to the back of the bracket and also go through the little holes on the computer board here so that they hold it in place. And this little computer board, just make sure it's not pulling on the ribbon cable too much. It should be snug, but not pulling. The next step is to place the screen in the piecade. And this is where I said don't screw on both sides of the top handle because you will need to separate it just a little bit to fit the screen in. Next up, you can place this lovely piecade decal on the top. So there's slots on both sides. There are two pieces of plexiglass with the vinyl in the center. When that's done, you can attach the top. And then the last step will be also attaching the buttons on the bottom. The next step is to attach this little last computer board right here to the side. So that last board that you put on attaches to the side of the board on the screen. And then the next step is to attach the power USB cable into the proper plug for the monitor. I found this part a little tricky. There is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack that plugs into the controller computer board uh, that blue one there on the bottom of the Pi Cade, one end plugs into that, the other end plugs into the headphone jack in the Raspberry Pi. The second cable is a micro USB cable that one plugs into that blue board, the other end, the USB end, plugs into the Raspberry Pi. The next step is to plug the Raspberry Pi onto the back of the Pi Cade. This is completely optional. You can place the Raspberry Pi in the base of the Pi Cade, you can really place it anywhere. There is a spot for it and there are plastic screws to use, uh, which I would definitely not recommend tightening all the way, just snugly is okay. Um, you can mount this anywhere. You can actually place the Pi in a case itself if you would like within the Pi Cade itself. And the very last step is to plug in all of the cables that you need. So for example, the HDMI cable from the monitor to the Raspberry Pi, the USB cables, the headphone jack. And one small piece of advice, if you're using a Pi 2 or Pi 3, you probably won't have any issues. If you are using a Pi 3B Plus, and this doesn't boot when you plug everything in, you may need an additional power supply for the screen. The Pi 3B Plus is very, very power hungry. Once it's all done, you can now enjoy the Pi Cade. So all in all, it took me a couple hours to set up. The actual instructions were extremely helpful. Just a reminder, this is the condensed version. So I did fly through a lot of the steps. If you would like the full detailed one, it's like a 20 minute video. Uh, feel free to check out the link I'll put in the description. But as you can see here, it's up, it's running, it's working. In a couple weeks, I'll be posting a review video after I've had some time to play around with it and get used to it. Uh, but for now, it's pretty sweet. I'm really, really happy with it. Definitely check out buyapie.ca if you're in Canada or pieshop.us if you are in the States. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you like my video, leave a like. If you didn't like my video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think of the Pi Cade in the comments below. If you have any questions, I will do my absolute best to answer them. Thank you, everyone. Take care.